today going to talk about uh, something, I, just a very, very simple software patch I made this summer. Uh, and the, there's lots of reasons why I want to talk about it. But um, mostly I want to talk about it because the, it was good to go after Richard because the, the analog synth I've been getting into, I've got my own little Euro rack. OK, I have two. Um, and, um, and, you know, it's growing. But it's, what it's doing is it's changing how I uh, think about, especially synthesis. Um, and, and, and actually, the, the modular synth um, is hugely influential. This is my software. I, I wasn't even going to talk about this. But this is my software, which is this kind of modular software environment. And so there's, the, there's modules that do different things. Um, and and they, they can plug together. And I designed this after making an album in 2006 on a Bukla 100-200, like one of the originals, um, which has the, the notorious red panel. Um, so, so that was one of the originals that was at Columbia, and it was working and at that time, and now it's getting fixed because something broke it. Um, but, but my software environment came out of thinking uh, about modular synthesis and then and then thinking about mo modular processing, so live processing using modulars, modules. Um, and I, this getting into the Eurorack made me realize that there's certain ways of patching in a Eurorack that um, I would never do um, just thinking about synthesis. Because there's things that are intuitive, uh, like you plug certain outputs into certain inputs just because you can. And I think in a, in a uh, software environment, there's barriers to that. So um, I think I'll start by just playing. Now, this whole instrument, I was just talking to Richard about this, it's like I've designed it mostly to be um, an instrument in an ensemble. I don't generally play solo. Um, and I, I mostly play with other, music, other instrumentalists. So I've mostly made most of my music playing in duo plus formations. But um, it's not an excuse, it's just to know if it feels monophonic, that might be why. So I'll play a little bit and then I can talk about this instrument. So um, I want to talk about this, this synth that I made this summer, which is feedback synth. And uh, the more I get into this stuff, the, le the more I get away from the GUIs. So I'm, I'm probably going to recode my whole interface to not have GUI elements, mostly because in Super Collider, no, not that one, I want to show you. This one, in Super Collider, the, um, the GUI stuff seems to be really CPU hog lately, and I don't, I don't know why. But this one, <coughs> right? I have the X Y. Right, it's very mapped to these, to what looks like on my screen. Whereas um, the one I was just playing mostly looks like 
looks like that on my lemur. I'm using lemur to control it, but I'm not actually, this is, this is what it looks like on the screen. Just, I just tell it what, what message it's going to receive, and then, and then it, it deals with that. So the thing that I got into this summer um, that came out of this thing you can do with a, with a quagasmatron in particular, and, and a lot of filters, is uh, controlling the frequency modulation of one filter with the output of another filter, which um, I, don't, I don't really understand it. Maybe somebody can explain it, but it just really fucks it up, right? It really just goes, it goes crazy. It starts just making nasty, noisy sounds. And, um, and I don't really know why. Uh, I think it's blowing up. I think the, the frequency of the filter is passing zero constantly, getting weird frequency modulations, um, and then, and, it's kind of just blowing up the filter. Um, I don't understand analog since it analog filters enough to know, but I'll show you some stuff in the digital domain of what happens. So um, I think this is really interesting because if you if you think something that I think the Eurorack just does so right, and I mean the bu the Buchla does so right, like going, I mean there was a student at, at U Chicago this year who did a he did his dissertation on um, San Francisco Tate Music Center and. Uh, Pauli Oliveros and, and Don Bukla and um, Mort Subotnik. And what's amazing about the, the Bukla situation is basically like Mort Subotnik decided we want, you know, we want this machine that can, I don't know, pr perform in the studio. They had nothing, they had the studio of nothing. And um, they, they put an ad in the newspaper and like Don Bukla came in and they're like, yeah, this is kind of what we want. And he went away for like six months and came back with the Bukla. It's insane. I mean, it's insane. It's still the most expressive of these instruments. It's just, or, or, or basically the entire fundamentals of the field are sum, summarized in that instrument. Um, but one of the things it does well is that all the, you know, all the signals are <coughs> positive negative voltage, voltage between the similar range. So either positive negative 5 voltage or positive negative 12 voltage. And if you think about something like frequency modulation, I mean, those of you who teach know how teaching frequent, how frequency, teaching frequency modulation goes. It's just like, what? Not what I don't, why are you multiplying? You know, they, they don't, it's really confusing because it, because, because you, the, the input to the frequency modulation, you have to rent, you know, get the values to fit within the correct range in order for it to function. Well, in the, in the, you know, something like this, you don't have to just plug a uh, voltage into the plug and it works, right? And, and in, and in software, you have to you have to scale the value, um, and I, you know, internally there's things going on, but uh, but you don't have to think about that, so it's much easier to deal with. Um, so I'm going to step you through, yeah, how I made this. So let me jump back to that, but I have to close it. I didn't think I had enough to be able to do this without closing this. So. Um, I also, in Super Collider, there's this wonderful uh, just-in-time programming stuff that J Julian Roberger made. I don't know how you say his last name, but I assume it's like that. Um, it's really great. Um, turn this down, just in case. So, ooh. Oh, I'll do that. So this is very step-by-step. Step. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm, just hear this. So, that's, that's the fundamental sound of the, of the instrument. Um, notice over here we're getting these check bad values. So basically it's, uh, the filter's blowing up and it's getting infinite values. You're getting not a number of returns, but luckily somebody's made an object that catches that and makes it so that you don't just get infinite DC offset in supercollider. Which so I'm I owe to that because you can't make an instrument like this without that kind of protection. Otherwise, you're blowing your ears off in the process. Um, so the only thing that's the thing that's going on in this that I'm I would never have done without the analog synth. So that's kind of that's my story today. 
I would never have done this without the analog sim, is um, I have a resonant low pass filter and it is going, that filter is going out, the local out, <clears throat> and coming back in and feeding back into itself and it's controlling its own frequency. And then I'm basically controlling with a <clears throat> random number generator, I'm controlling how much, and, and the mouse, how much of its own frequency, or how much of itself is going into the frequency. So I'm controlling the, the feedback level into, the, uh, into its own frequency. Um, that's really counterintuitive to me. I don't know if, you know, things like that, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know that that would create these great sounds. So. So that's the first layer in the uh, synth. And then the second layer, to add this, is, um, is here's the second resonant filter, now also being controlled by random numbers, and, um, and it's basically filtering the original sound. So you get kind of a resonance over, over the freaking out filter. Uh, let's see if this, oh, I need the output. Should be able to hear this. <laughs> yeah. Just a question in the feedback. Yeah. When you use feedback, do you use delays or it's just the next? There's no delay, yeah. yeah. The delay. No delay huh? Yeah, the de I mean, there's the delay of the. Um, of the, of the process, but you don't yeah. Yeah. control it. No. So I, I tried to factor it in, but what it, it's, it's um, if you add a delay, so I could do it. Um, uh, if you add a st st stationary delay, like not variable, uh, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, and then if you add a variable delay, it just doesn't work. Yes. And I don't know why. I was wondering if you could get all the things that just, just which is good now. So yeah. Maybe ch 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 instead of ch ch ch. Oh, change the speed of it. Yeah. yeah. Disruptive. Disruptive. Yeah, or something like that. Okay. Yeah. To, in order to make it maybe more uh, grid on the grid, you know, more quantized, you know, like, thanks yeah. to this delay of, the, of control, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it was just a question. No, no, it's a good question. I mean, I kind of add that in the last stage with amplitude control yeah. of my hand. Yeah. Um, I'm not a super player. When you say no delay, do you mean one vector of delay? Yeah, one. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, like 64 samples. But yeah. maybe you can change the. I, I don't know a super collider that well. Can you change the vector size on the run? On the run, no. But, I mean, I could probably. Yeah. What I could probably do is add. I mean, we can do it right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What can I do? I had it right. But here. I didn't want to. Put no, no, it's fine. Track. No, no, I, mean, I don't care. This is this is that's basically it. That's my presentation. So uh, that should do it. Um, Still commenting? No, I, no I commented out the. Uh, oh no, you're right. So there's the delay. Alright, so let's try that. How much so this is a smaller vector. Yeah. yeah. So this is, I think what we could do, I think it's at longer. 0 0.2, you want it longer? I mean, 0 0.2 seconds, that's pretty long. That's very long. Yeah. 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 So, uh, even and shorter. No, no, like, yeah, like, like less than 64%. But you cannot go you less than 64%. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's we, I mean, we could do, here, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll do. You won't get the feedback if you always modulate at that speed, your delay, that's for sure. Yeah. That's a good way to kill a feedback. You just put an opportunity, like, you just put the chorus and your feedback goes down. So I think right. I'm doing a step delay now. I'll do one a second and then I'll go between. <coughs> You're not going to get under your vector though. No, 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 yeah, you make the no, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying that if you modulate too quickly, you can then use the sound yeah. you hear. So rather than modulate, I think what it is is that I was using a smooth random number generator, and I think now I'll just use a stepped one. Let's try try that. So. Uh, Yeah, let's, uh, sorry. Uh, What's the frequency at which you change the frequency? Yeah, I don't know why that... Sorry. 
See, it just stops. Yeah. I don't understand it. Uh, what if you short? It might be also that the delay has got a, a high pass filter to avoid accumulation. Yeah. You would do that often in delay to remove the DC offset. Yeah. And maybe that's it. You just kill your DC in your country. That's what I like about modulus in, is that yeah. really their protection are all bespoke. Right. Which means that they all react at different time a different time and different speed. And then you get the same exact patch on two different filters that you cross feedback like you do, yeah. and you get two radically different sounds. Yeah. Because they have different the behaviors yeah. in terms of distortion, but also in terms of what they let in and out. I think maybe a way to do it is um, is actually to have a switching uh, yeah. switching delays, switching between uh, exact um, multiplications of the uh, vector Because mm -hmm. I've done that kind of thing before, and you that like this thing. Oh no, it's not. Um, that works pretty well, and so then I could. That's something to try. This is great. Yeah. This is really nice. Um, Another thing, you could have your feedback system run in parallel yeah. and switch. Right. Literally right. just mix out different options. And maybe some bit of mixing back in, but not necessarily 100%. Yeah, it wouldn't be that hard to make it like 64 channels going and then just switching, switching to the like Upscaling is easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plus, if you had a random filter on each instance. Yeah. So because each yeah. new grain or whatever thing yeah. is spawned, you get a new instance of it. So if in the isolation you would have some random generator and put some peak frequency on it yeah. in a certain range, each yeah. of them would behave slightly differently. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Mm. Um, awesome. Love it. So yeah, the last thing is just a compounder and a clip. And the clip, so the, the la this this filter, um, which is nice, you could hear like it brought out the like the really low buzzy uh, square wavy stuff, um, and I think it's like it, it makes the the filter uh, the sound focus in the low register. Um, in the final version I have, it, I can switch it between a low pass filter and a high pass filter. So the low pass filter focuses more on the buzzy. Uh, square wavy stuff and the high pass filter focuses more on the um, the, the uh, like white noisy kind of sound. So uh, yeah, is that is that a thing specific to Superprover that that you've clipped at half scale, or is it just is it actually is it like is that clipped half scale, or is that clipped full scale? Uh, it's clipped at zero point five. Mm. And, and you 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 might do. Then you can then you can amplify it out to one if you want. Okay, that's what, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah uh, it just and you'll see like what's what's great. So it when it clips it. So so if you set the clipping to be like at, at minus one and one. Yeah. How does that change the sound? It just matters where your signal is going. So this signal is like way outside of yeah. negative one and one. So yeah. um, so if it's clipping at zero point five, it'll, it'll be a little more clippy. Yeah. Um, it'd be less. Less of the signal. Oh, so, so even if you clipped it to to like ones, then you you'd, your house, right? you'd still be clipping a lot anyway. So it sounds the same. Say so, so. it again. Sorry, it's fine. I'm talking through my head. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, you're it clipping, would probably sound exactly. You're clipping a lot anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and then, yeah. Whoops. Yeah, so you get the pitches. So, uh, yeah, so the final like design, something like this. There's the resonant low pass filter, which is feeding back into itself on the frequency. Then there's these random numbers uh, that are making the change in the sound. Um, I, when I press my fingers down, I use the Z value on um, lemur to freeze. So the random numbers are flying all over the place. I press the Z, the Z value down, it freezes all the numbers. So, so I can get these like frozen uh, sounds that I would have to program each of these sounds for like a week to get, to get them. They're really beautiful. 
Um, and then I can slide the value. So like, the, so I press down, boom, and then I slide a little bit, and it's like a, just an infinitesimal change in the number, and that can change enormously. It can either do nothing, or it can do enormous changes, which I really <clears> like. I mean, this, this is like really engaging with a, an instrument that I have no idea what's going to happen when I'm playing. Um, so, so freeze and slide, so I press the button down and I freeze. Um, then that sound is going out through this low pass and high, high pass filter. Something I like to do in my instruments is there's like a main signal that's making most of the sound, but then that signal is going through another sound that I can, I can interrupt it and make a different sound that might complement it. So I have these two things that can, comp that can replace this patch I just showed. Is that, One, yes? Is there any way we can hear some of the freezes here? Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. Um, there's a sweeping uh, resonant noise um, with an amplitude modulator, and then this like dual square wave, which sound very much like the patch, but they're just like slightly different versions. Um, in the end, these things can all go out to other things I have in my software. So I have this like kind of um, grabby thing, this uh, cycle grabber, so it grabs one cycle of the of the audio. Um, I have a eight second buffer that I can it records the previous eight <coughs> seconds, and then I can play through it with a granular. So X, Y on a granular uh, patch. Um, I have a really cheesy variable delay, but I, I like it. Uh, and it can get some gnarly stuff. Um, and then the sound can also feed back into any, anything in the patch. So I, I'll show you some of that. Uh, so I'm going to boot my software. Turn it down for a second. Did it, it let's just make sure it shows the Okay. Sometimes it'll just revert to the display. Wink. So there's my software. <clears throat> yeah, so there's a freeze, right? It's a nice one. changes in my fingers really make a difference. Well, a um, I was playing this recently in a gig and my buddy uh, who I was playing with was like, oh man, that, that you know that analog synth, it really sounds great. It's like, it's like it really has a particular thing. I was like, ha, ha! <laughs> so I've also got this, so I can be playing, right, and then got this filtery white noise, but it's, it's better when it's slow. So when I lift my finger, it's off. Is everything at 44.1? Is that what the yeah. sample resolution? It's funny, it reminds me of the, you know, the beat by codes, the beat by codes. You never tried them? All, all these sounds? Yeah. You, dude, I'll have to show you some. Sounds great. I think you're going to dig. Love it. Uh, <laughs> I love mean, using uh, chaotic oscillators. What's that? Chaotic oscillators. Yeah. yeah. So, like, this thing uses chaotic oscillators. Oh, wow. Look at that. So, this is like using the uh, Dinnerman, which you have less control on this than. The system. I'm way more control over here. I'm on the chaotic. On the yeah. Okay. I feel like that. This one. I mean, like, like more I have more no more idea more more what's going to happen. Well, yeah, I guess I, like he could do what he wants more. Is that what yeah. you mean by That's, control? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, 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 when I do something, I kind of know what it is, but then I'm getting bored by that. Yeah. Um, there's one part that I. This is a, I would, 
thing I love about playing a lot is finding sounds that you just, like, I love that, that sound. I played this instrument for like five years before I found that sound. And then it's like, ah, listen to that all day. Uh, so, yeah. Oh yeah, so, so then, um, oh, and then the, it's kind of raw. Yeah. It's just, it's just like a blank piece of paper. It's three minutes. Yeah, <laughs> square waves kind of interruption. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and so that that can feed into. So I, one thing I was I was doing earlier is. So that's grabbing grabbing like a uh, down to a single cycle. So that's a sixty-four sample. Cycle and then model ones, and then I can play. Now, right now, I'm just playing a buffer of recording recordings of the last eight seconds I played. Very cool. Great. Thank you.